book, or at least we're getting there. So let's go Hi, everyone. start webinar on Zoom and some people. I can still say good morning because it's technically morning by me. That's Our true. webinar on Zoom so. and some people. Oh. So hello everyone. Um, this is our first tutorial Tuesday and we're super excited to be here with you all. I've got some fun things that I'm going to share. I'm actually going to do my makeup live for you guys. So this is your chance to ask any questions that you have, anything pertaining to application, um, you know, anything about the products that I'm using. I'm here and I, I love to interact with you guys. So please, please Make sure that you comment if you're on Zoom, use the chat. And if you are on Facebook, use the comment section. And if I don't get to it today, I will keep looking and answer your questions for everybody that is watching it on the record. Yeah, I got you, girl. So I'm going to monitor the chats, hang out with you all, and Lee's going to create a look. So for those of you that maybe haven't met us yet, my name is Lisa Martin. I have been partnered with Motives Cosmetics since 2002, which is crazy. So I've seen a lot of branding changes, product enhancements. So it's been a hot minute, but I have been full-time working with Motives as a business for 15 years now. So super happy to be here. Very grateful for our community. And, um, you know, we're really excited. There, there is a new chapter and a new day. I know it's cliche to say, but we're so excited to be showcasing these beautiful volumes we have. Right? Now it's in a book, right? Like book of yes. palettes. <laughs> book of palettes. So it actually worked out perfect because um, as beauty advisors with Motives, we are committed to doing 30 faces in 30 days with our clients and then 30 looks in 30 days for ourselves. So I know Lee has been using volume one and I've actually been using volume two and we didn't even plan that, but it worked out perfect. Um, so we're going to, you're going to get a little bit of both today. Um, but, you know, Lee is from the, the beauty industry. She's been a master cosmetologist for a long time. We don't need to yeah, pick I think we're going on it. 28 <laughs> years. So I have worked with thousands of clients of all different ages and all sorts of things. And so, you know, what I really love to do is provide solutions for people and really make things easy so that, you know, anything you learn it, are things that you can incorporate. I'm also about like beauty shouldn't take a lot of time yes. <laughs> because let's face it, we are all busy. We all have the same amount of hours in the yeah. day, but we all fill it up with, with all sorts of things. And, and so I'm all about like five, 10 minutes. If I'm doing like something a little bit more dramatic is really all the time that I take on my makeup. And that's really why I'm loving this new collection. Now, this was just launched the week before last. It's brand new, hot off the press. And there's two volumes, like Lisa said. And each volume actually does have an eye palette, a lip and cheek palette, and a face palette. But what I've been learning as I've been creating looks, and I think, I don't know how many looks I've created I, I've created more than I've actually posted because I started using this um, before others even got it. But I've been using all the palettes on different areas of my face. So yeah. don't get stuck on, oh, well, I can only use the eye palette on the eyes because it just gives you more options when you really look at the collection. So I'm going to start by just kind of showing you guys the each collection. So or each palette, I should say. So this is the eye palette that comes in volume one. And I really like it because it's a lot of neutral tones. Mm -hmm. But then in this one, we've got a little bit of shimmer on the end there. So you can kind of use that for pops on your mobile lid. Mm -hmm. And then we've got our lip and cheek palette, which has two pressed powder blushes and then six creams that you can use on, again, your eyes, your lips, your cheeks, you know, all different areas of your face. They're very, very versatile. And then last but not least, we have our face palette, which has a matte highlighter, 
a bronzer, a contour powder, and it has two shimmer powders um, for more of that strobing highlighting. So I am really looking forward to kind of doing a different look than I have done. I've done a lot of like natural looks last week because just what I had going on in my schedule. Um, but today I've got some photo shoots later and I, I really kind of have a version in my mind that I want to do. So should I get started, Lisa? Or do you want to talk about your palette and your look a little yeah, bit? Yeah, I can just kind of add them. Sequoia said she can't wait for a poppin' look. So no pressure yeah. to me, but better be good. Poppin's good. Poppin's good. <laughs> um, I just want to sort of comment on the quality of them. The, you know, I'll show the same one that you were showing first, but um, for someone who's not, you know, uh, makeup I, I should say I am makeup savvy. I've been working with this line for a long time, but not traditionally from the industry. Um, and so what I have learned is that less is more and it's easier to add than take away. So, you know, depending on what brands that you're using, uh, you might be almost shocked. Um, even if you're using really highly pigmented products, I think you may still be shocked with the quality of these and the pigment behind them. But um, you know, like Lee said, they're just, they're so beautiful and, um, they are mostly matte, but they have like a velvety finish. So they're not dry. It's almost like, even though it's matte, it's creamy and silky. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they blend really that. well. Like they're very pigmented, yes. but they blend into the skin, which honestly, from a application standpoint, you want things that blend easily because it mm -hmm. takes you less time to do it then. If you're like struggling trying to get something blended and really working hard, that's just adding time onto your, your application. Yeah, that's that's a great point. You know, it's quick, it's easy. Like even watching you do it now, how the, everything just sort of effortlessly blends together. So just be mindful of that. We do have a new eye prime. So we have an eye base already, which has more of a matte finish. Um, and so that's sort of a fan favorite. It's one of our top selling products. We did then recently launch an eye prime, which is a, a same functionality, right? It's an eye primer, but uh, this one has a doe foot applicator. It's a little more of a creamy texture. Um, if you joined us last week on a webinar where we, we reviewed all the new products, uh, we were sort of comparing and contrasting and some makeup artists were even sharing that they love to layer them. Um, but I do want to note that, and I'll put the link to the new eye prime in the chat, but I find that that makes application a lot easier as well um, when you use the eye prime. So, and then you're going to get the true pigment of the color that you're applying. Always start with something, especially yeah. because I don't know about you, but as I age, I'm getting more hyperpigmentation in my lids and just like uneven skin tone. So you want to start with a nice neutral base. And I did use my eye base prior, but like less is more with both of them. Yeah. Sometimes people tend to use a little bit too much, but before I get too far, I just want to like show you what I did so far. So taking my blender brush, I'm actually using this blush color right here in my transition because I wanted kind of a pop of pink yeah. today. I don't know why I'm feeling kind of pink like. Mm -hmm. So anytime you do your transition line, it's it's better to keep your eye open and just kind of go back and forth holding your <laughs> I was like brush. You know, your brush at the end just so you can kind of blend it as you apply it. And generally the transition line you always want it to be more of a matte color. It's transitioning from your mobile lid up into your you know, your upper lid, your brow bone, that kind of thing. Um, and now I'm just taking my eyeshadow palette and I'm using this really dark, it is like a magic wand, this really dark color here and using a flatter shadow brush to get like almost like a sideways V just mm -hmm. to lift up my eye because I do have hooded eyes. So this is one of the things you can do to make them look less hooded and go in and almost make it look like your crease is higher than it is. Mm -hmm. And it's going to make your eyes look less hooded. So as you talk, that's what I'm going to be doing right now. I love that. Those are such great tips. Um, and that's, you know, I still, I learn all the time. Yeah, I think even people in the industry that have been around a long time, there's always something to learn, right? But um, I love that. 
I always say there's no rules. There's like some guidelines, but I love that you're using a blush as a shadow. Mm -hmm. um, it's actually really pretty. And then it's blending really well with that color. Which color are you using from the shadow palette? So it's the darkest one right here. And a lot of people are afraid of these darker colors. Like when I meet with clients, they're like, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do with those. And honestly, I love it in the outer corner. Yeah. And listen, you can blend out. Like you don't have to apply so much where it's as even dark as me. Like, and they also work great underneath the eye. Like I love to use them instead of eyeliner because I tend to have more oily skin. So when I use eyeshadow, it gives a softer look and it also stays a little bit better because mm -hmm. um, it doesn't like slide around. It just stays put. So it's really nice to incorporate those darker colors in there. And if you get too dark, that's when you use this color mm -hmm. and you can just go over it and kind of soften it with that. So don't be afraid to kind of push yourself out of your comfort zone and try different things than you would, you know, normally kind of gravitate towards, especially if you've got like a date night or a ladies night out, or, you know, you're doing something a little different. It's like, Hey, just fun. Yeah. go for it. I think, um, those are all great tips and kind of echo that you can always like, if you put a little too much on, or you went a little too high, um, just taking that blend blender brush, like you're saying, just go back and, and, you know, it kind of just softens it and, and disappears a little bit, but in that palette, that dark shade almost looks black, but it is more of like a navy. So just so you all know, I, again, I think people get intimidated looking at it, but it almost looks purple because you're adding it. That's the other reason why you want to do a base shade. I never need to do that for like a very long time. Yeah, over the pink. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so do like a transition shade in your um, crease sort of so that as you blend the colors, uh, it'll soften a little. And I also feel like it does help blend it a little bit better as well rather than just putting it on. Now, the other thing I want to point out is like, do my eyes look a little bit bigger already? Because mm -hmm. I do tend to have small eyes. So again, like doing that darker color in the outer corner is going to make my eyes look bigger, but because I'm doing it on angle and what I tell others to do is just follow your natural um, shape of your eye and just keep on drawing that line up. You mm -hmm. don't want to go below that point because it can make your eyes look kind of droopy mm -hmm. and downward. But what you can do if you go a little too far, which I did with the pink, because I got a little carried away, then all you have to do is take a little foundation or concealer mm -hmm. at the end and then just kind of wipe, wipe that away and kind of shape that out. So it's kind of like your eraser and you can just get in there and do that. Now I'm going to grab this color here and it's one of those shimmers. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to use a little bit more of a flatter, like more flatter of a brush. brush. And I'm going to put that on my mobile lid. Now, these are the colors that I use today from volume two. So um, again, they're sort of matte. And then you've got these two sh more shimmery shades. And I actually use sort of this, um, this one. <laughs> it's, it's a little more of a warmer tone brown. And I'll just kind of, I had some meetings this morning, which is why I'm already made up. But, um, and I, that's kind of what I used here in the center. And I like this big fluffy kind of crease brush. And then I'm like, I've become a very big fan of um, like reds and kind of like maroons and mauvey colors, I guess, because I have brown eyes, you can kind of do any color brightens a little bit, right? Um, but then like leasing, if you want to use um, more of a small, this is like a dome shaped brush. And I actually like, I have fairly big eye lids. So um, it works for me to take a shade, like I use this uh, I'm so not good at this back and forth. Um, I'm actually put it like right on my eye lid. So sometimes, you know, that's a little bit of a darker shade. Sometimes it can sort of close your eye depending on the shape of your eye, but just play with it. You never know. And then like Lisa said, I like to put a little bit underneath here too. But I think with every woman, that's a universal rule that you can kind of lift your eye a little bit by focusing the darker color, like mm -hmm. on the outside here as a V that always works. Um, but yeah, just, you know, a lot of people will look, it's funny that sometimes people, I don't even think I'm 
like uh, I'm not a pro at makeup, but sometimes people look at me and say, oh, your makeup looks so great. I can never do it like that. And it's funny for me <laughs> to hear that because like I felt like that 15 years ago when I first started um, working with motives, but you just get out of your comfort zone. It's something you can wash off, right? So like, that's what I love because with hair, it's a much bigger commitment if you want to try a new color or a new style, but makeup, you can just put it on, wipe it off, or like you're saying, just um, your magic eraser with a little bit of concealer or foundation on your brush. Um, so have fun and play with the colors. Another thing I like to do is like with a fluffy brush like this, take one of the lighter, uh, shimmer, more shimmery shades. So like, I'm gonna use this one and just put it like, just like right here, you know? Like if you're mm -hmm. like, and you're busy and you feel like you are tired and maybe you don't get great rest, um, sometimes that creates the illusion of your eyes being a little bit more open. For sure. Yeah. Um, so I just took that same darker color and just swiped a little bit underneath my eye as like an eyeliner look. And now I'm going to take my precisely the point eyeline and line the top. Now, the other thing I see a lot of people do when they put eyeliner on the top is they tug on their eye and they go like this to put it on. And I try not to like tug on my eyes at all because I don't want to cause any more aging. I'm closer to 50 now than I am 45. So you need to I, work against gravity. Not yes. I want it. to reverse age. And so I don't want to like undo what my eye cream's doing. So, um, what you can do though, is you can kind of lean your head back and look down and that's going to actually kind of stretch out your lid a little bit. And then you can hold your mirror a little bit underneath and see exactly where to put that line and then you can just do little dashes and I like to try to just get it along my lash line I don't like my eyeliner too thick because my eyes are smaller and I almost just want it to make it look like my lashes are a little bit thicker mm -hmm. so hopefully you can see the difference between the two eyes a little bit and of course I can post pictures later as well you do the other eye. I like that tip of just those little dashes and then collectively it kind of gets you where you want to go. Yeah, exactly. And so I my do eyes ring often like eyeliner on the top and then shadow underneath because the yeah. shadow is a little softer. You don't always need like a really hard defined line underneath. But you know, I can say that I also love getting my angled brush. I get it uh damp with mm. our setting spray the 10 years younger and then you can dip in that that eyeshadow and get more of a precise line too if you want to do that on top yeah that's a great little tip so sequoia said she started she tried motives at we just had our international convention and we had a beautiful booth with all the new palettes so everyone could try and now she's all involved i love that awesome <laughs> yeah no it's you know using so many products over the years, like I pretty much have had access to anything and everything. Mm -hmm. And I can honestly say that this hands down is the best makeup that I've ever used, not only for myself, but my customers, which is why I, you know, use it. Yeah. And I am like heavily involved in it because it's nice. It's nice. And it's refreshing to have things that you know work. at work you know I think that's one thing that I love working with the line also is that you can trust that the products are going to deliver right the people are going to get the results that they're expecting they're actually going to be more impressed right um than they were maybe expecting and I think as you know many of us are are busy we wear a lot of hats we're working we're running households maybe you've got a family that you're caring for um, so this should be something that's fun, that's empowering. And I feel like it's a natural conversation starter. So I think from a business side, it's something so easy, um, for people to gravitate towards and, and connect over a commonality. Like, oh my gosh, I love your lipstick or your skin's glowing. You know, it just opens a conversation and I really love being able to save people time and money because, um, both of those are very valuable, right? And it's exhausting with all the trial and error, trying to pick products that are best suited for you. Um, 
can be very time consuming and expensive. So that's really our goal. And I like that you point that out, that being in the industry and having access to so many things, you know, um, we are always in, in line with the best of the best, the creme de la creme. And there's so many great products out there, of course, you know, and there's some great brands out there. Um, I just think what makes ours different is the fact that we're a brokerage company. We're not manufacturing ourselves. So we're doing a lot of legwork behind the scenes. We have a whole team that are sourcing products, working with the vendors and the manufacturers to make sure the shades are exactly as we want them. The formulas are exactly as we want them. The packaging is exactly as we want it. And then it's exclusive just to us. But we're able to pull and use so many different um, manufacturers, which is a lot of different resources, right? Um, versus sometimes there's brands that will just use one manufacturer and then they're trying to use maybe like limited resources to create the best of everything. And maybe you've had that experience as a client where, um, you know, you, you fall in love with the brand for one particular product or category of product. So then you try other categories of product, but maybe you're not as wowed from that, right? So whereas us, I just think it keeps getting better and better. Like you're wowed by every category of product and our development team really nails the formula. So I'm super grateful for everything that they put in behind the scenes. Um, yeah, and I'm just sharing. So we're on Zoom and Facebook. So those of you on Facebook can't see the Zoom chat, but Sequoia is saying the pigment and delivery is insane. Um, so along with skincare, right? So, and then we're able to kind of um, makeup always looks better on beautiful skin, right? So, um, and it does tie in with health and wellness, Sequoia. I love that you say that. I just want to let people know what I've been doing just so they're not wondering. Yeah. So first I took this matte highlighter and I actually used it to set my concealer underneath. Mm -hmm. And I also put a little bit here just because I, I tend to get a little oily there. So I like to put a little extra powder. Then I took my contour powder right here and I put a little contour just to lift that mm -hmm. cheek a little bit. Rule of thumb is you want to stop where the corner of your eye is. You don't generally want to go any further than that. Powder is a little bit easier to blend as far as the yeah. So it's easy. And then I'm getting a little saggy underneath here. So I like to just take some, yes. yeah. just kind of go underneath and chisel that out a little. Anywhere you put contour powder is going to help push things back, push things in. Um, I also have a bigger forehead. If you look at my forehead compared to others. So I also like to put just nonsense. A little it's all nonsense. <laughs> it's a receding hairline, <laughs> but I like to put just a little bit of that contour powder up here because it's going to also give somewhat of the illusion of a smaller forehead. So now so that I, I have that same problem of I don't even want to say receding because I've always had this. No, same thing. I have. But <laughs> so you, can you guys see that difference? Like I did one side and not the other, but like I just did what Lee was saying, like corner of my eye. And then you can kind of blend it into a C. I learned that from somebody too. <laughs> but I like to put a little dark up here because otherwise my forehead does look really, really wide. Um, and I will say literally, like you don't need a lot. You just dab one time that's all just dab one time this is the tiniest little bit yeah you can always put a little more on like you saw when I did my forehead like I kind of just reapplied more because I needed a little more mm -hmm. um but if you mess up again and you put too much on just grab your highlighting powder the the matte one and just kind of buff it out yeah and then you can even take the extra and do it like on the sides of your nose yeah I did that too and then my nose actually dips down so I like to put just a little bit underneath the tip of my nose. Just make sure it's blended and it doesn't look like your nose is dirty. <laughs> but like, do that check in the mirror, in your rear view yeah. mirror, in your Someone car. Someone will like come up to you and be like, wait, you got something on your nose. Yeah, By I don't like, want that. Did we say these all have mirrors, which I love. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually so using cool. that because it's hard to do it in the camera. And yeah. I'm literally using the same blush that I did on my eyes, on my cheeks. And now that I did that, I'm going to grab my face palette again and using the same brush I did for the contour, I'm going to actually just use a little bit of this bronzing powder. And so the bronzing powder is really what I like to do where the sun's going to hit my face. So I like to just go a little bit down the center of my nose and I like to go 
So I did like contour powder, blush, and then I'm gonna do a little bronze or kind of almost above that and then go up. So kind of do a C or backwards C depending on what side you're on. I'm just doing what you're doing because always something to learn. And like, obviously in the summer, I have a little bit of life to my skin, but I live in Wisconsin. So in the winter, bronzer is my friend. Yes. Otherwise I look so like pale and monotone. So, you know, you want to, you want to just put it where the light would naturally hit your face. Um, see, I'm getting a little oily here. So I'm just, well, and I have like very, um, I'm very poofy cheeks for lack of a better term. I don't know, full cheeks, I guess you could say. So I noticed a huge difference when I put a little bit of like bronzer and contour on my cheeks. Otherwise I look super round. Um, yeah, so but bronzer does not go all over your face. I've had clients think it does. Yeah, um, but it will. That's from like high school. I remember. Yeah, before we knew any better, you know, it, really? life is all about learning. But I do. I know you do. I also tend to have oily skin, so I um, love that these are matte. We do have a um, a different contour palette. I personally find this easier to use, and I love that it's all in one place. Um, and then I just want to reiterate that you were talking about this too, but you really don't like, you could use a face powder, but I haven't been with this because like Lee was showing you, you can just take this finishing powder and dust sort of like underneath your eyes and then like do a T and then you can sort of use the, the bronzer and the contour. Um, but you know, everyone has their preference. Some people really want to put a, a setting powder and then do that. You could do this and then put like the HG powder or finishing powder. Um, again, no rules, right? We're just giving ideas here. Yeah. And then what I did too, is I took this shimmer powder on the top. So this one has a little gold in it, but I wanted to use something a little less gold today. And I use sort of this like fluffy brush. And I literally put that, so again, contour, blush, bronzer. And now I'm just putting this right on the high point of my cheek here and just above my eyebrow. So that when the light hits it, gives you kind of that nice youthful glow that you want. I'm gonna do that too. I'm working from volume two here. Which one should I use? Do you, do, would you recommend one over the other? Lee? The bottom. The more gold color? Sure, just for today. I but know. I love how these palettes are great for any skin tone, any age. They're very versatile. And I don't want people to think, oh, well, I'm just going to get one or the other. Because, like, honestly, I love them yeah. both. Yeah. And you can just create more looks right. by having both of them. Well, I was teasing when we did a webinar the other day. And by the way, like, these all have these plastic sheets. Keep them in your palette so that the, the mirror that doesn't get dusty and dirty. But um, I just love how I'm a super organized, tidy person. And like when I was younger, I had like a caboodle for everything. Do you, first of all, caboodles are coming back. My daughters both recently got them. But I know, I saw that. It's so fun to organize stuff. So I just love that these are super, like really all you need is mascara, a little eyeliner and foundation, you know? And so these just look so pretty standing up next to each other, um, kind of inspired me to clean up and refresh my entire personal collection. And these are our personal ones. Obviously, if, if you are using, um, we wouldn't, like I was putting my fingers in my, my lip palette because it's mine, but on, if it was something for a client that you're sharing with other people, we would be more sanitary, obviously. Um, so Christian says, Lee, any thoughts on how bronzer enhances the look on darker skin? Yeah. I mean, so you generally bronzer is going to be a little warmer and mm -hmm. then contour is going to be a little bit of a cooler color. So really no difference. You're going to use it to kind of warm up and give, you know, like a little bit of life to the skin. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's why, you know, we have two different bronzers, one in each collection volume. Um, but yeah, I actually, so I wanted to just point out before I used our, our newer brow gels on my brows. I'm like in love with that formula because I've got unruly white eyebrows yes. <laughs> and I use the brown and it really covers nice. It keeps my brows in check. Like I don't have to worry about them getting unruly through the day. 
And then I just popped on some of my Fiber Lush Mascara, which I curled my lashes first, which a lot of women skip. But if you just take a couple seconds to just curl those lashes, they're going to look a lot longer. Your eyes are going to look a lot more open. And it's just, again, one of those things that does not take a lot of time. And then put your mascara on right away so that it kind of holds that curled shape a little bit better versus if you, you wouldn't. So mm -hmm. now that I'm to the end, I'm going to just take my lip palette here, my cheek and lip palette. And I think I'm going to go with this. You could tell I've been using that color a lot. This color right here for my lips, just so that it's not too light for the rest of my face. Mm -hmm. um, I just kind of like, don't always have a plan. I just go like for what I'm gravitate towards. And I'm like, good job, you know, good enough. I'll just yeah. put that on. I think that's the fun part. But I will say like, what I like about having a palette of lip color is if you put it on and you're like, oh, it's not the right tone for the look I'm going for, just like blend it with another one, right? So I actually love, 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 and I don't typically wear a lot of color on my lips. I have like really small lips and I usually try to do a more focal point on my eye and then more of a nude neutral lip. But I like even my husband commented every time I've been using these, this is from volume two, but you can see I've been using this these, like darker shade and this bright shade. Mm -hmm. Um, I actually like the combination of those together, but I've also been using them on my cheeks and he, I mean, he's sweet. He usually notices when I like switch something up too. Um, but I, I just feel like if, if men notice that something looks different, then it must be, must be good. Right? <laughs> yeah. Um, but I'm going to just for fun add a little, um, I'm doing like this middle shade here. That is fun. Um, my yeah, my cheek. Why not? Love that. By the way, this, um, is a retractable eye and lip brush that we have this is what I use to put my my lip on what is the lip color it's this one I could try to look on the back bottom row from left so I think it's called rust um I'm not like I don't really look at the color names I need to learn them yet but I believe that's what it's called and then if you want like a little extra pop take your face palette and you can take I'll take this shimmer powder here and just put a little bit on my finger and just. Oh, good tip. Go like that. And you guys, this is like, this is my look. Now, took a little longer because we were talking, but you could probably rock this out in 10 minutes for sure. Mm -hmm. Especially the more you do it, like sometimes people they're like, well, I, I just don't know if I could do that. And it's like, like anything, right? If you just kind of get your system down pat. I'm to the point in my life right now where my skincare routine actually so takes important. longer yes. than my makeup routine. Yes. Um, right. <laughs> but that's that's okay because you gotta like layer and you know and mm -hmm. stuff like that. But yeah, I mean this is a little it bit cool. But and actually you did whip that together, like with us talking. That's impressive. Yeah. I want to echo the um curling your eyelashes like our lash curler I just posted it it's 11.95 which is it's super, a nice metal one too it's a really nice one it comes with an extra um rubber um pad or whatever you call it in there so don't throw that away when you get it but um I was I was skipping that step for a long time actually what inspired me to do it is like my daughter's 12 so she doesn't wear a whole lot of makeup on regular but she does curl her lashes, use mascara. And then she really loves like these, the cream part of these palettes because it is so versatile and she'll kind of use that on her lips and cheeks. But anyway, um, when we were at convention, I was watching her get ready. And that was like, I was like, oh, you know, that really is, it makes a big difference. And like you said, it doesn't, does not take long. So that's one very uh, short step um, that can make a big difference and it's a super affordable product that you, you may not have or if you have it you should be replacing at least that little rubber part um, more often but it's for also sure. a great gift for people sometimes well both of these are great gifts right and can we talk about the price so it's eighty dollars for one of the volumes which has three big like comprehensive palettes right so 
it's an incredible value because we've had other eyeshadow palettes that are, you know, half the size that are $49.95 and they're worth every penny. I, I think that's even a great price. Um, but I just think that they just, everything about this collection is incredible. I'm so excited about it. I really hope you all get it um, and enjoy it and share it with friends because I think, you know, the average woman gets very overwhelmed by choices, like all day, every day. Like my family teases me every time we go out to eat. I'm not a picky eater, so everything looks good. So I always ask the server, like, what are some of your favorites? And if they mention something that's like on the list of options, I'm like, all right, I'm going to get that. Cause I'm just like, I don't, I don't need to make this extra decision today. <laughs> you know what I mean? So if we can help you make an easy decision for yourself, that's going to empower you to like, look and feel great. Um, you know, you deserve it. Get one, get both. Um, like we said, they're both for every, um, age, ethnicity, uh, you know, they're just two different volumes or two different collections. So I saw many of you had one already, which is awesome. And you can buy one now and buy the next one later. Uh, so we'll hang out for another minute or so. Oh, yes, And use your setting spray. So I actually use the No More Shine today because I can already tell my skin is just wanting to be oily today. So that's what you saw me spraying on. And I did layer it twice. And I used my little fan that I just got just to dry it in between. So it dries a little faster. Mm -hmm. Plus it feels good. <laughs> hey, Vila's like, um, I bought them both the day I saw them. Yeah. Yes. So listen, if you are um, a business owner, right? It makes sense to buy it because you're gonna be able to showcase it. And when, when someone comments, then it's something that you can easily um, offer to someone and sell it. And if you're a customer, uh, we really want to invite you to, if you don't have a beauty advisor, uh, we can connect you with one. Uh, if you do have a beauty advisor, reach out and say, hey, you know, I caught this uh, tutorial. I'm so excited about it. And you can schedule a one-on-one -on -one with them, whether it be online or in person, whatever your preference or possibility is. Um, and be like, everyone's like loving your little fan. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I just got it at International Convention and I'm like, oh, I should have gotten a few more of them, but I love to, like I said, dry people's faces. I do a lot of wedding parties and I use this to help kind of dry in between as well when I airbrush and all of that jazz. So super handy. All that jazz. That reminds me of, everything reminds me of the movie. Yeah. All, all right, everyone. Well, this was super fun, Lee. Thank you so much for all your knowledge and education. We hope you all had fun. We're trying to keep these like you know, half hour or so every single Tuesday. So we're going to be focusing on different products each week. Um, let us know. You can um, send a direct message and let us know if there's certain products that you'd like for us to cover in one of these tutorial Tuesdays. Um, certainly feel free to reach out and ask any questions. Um, but you'll be seeing us. We're around. There's always things going on. Um, Have a great day, everybody. Yeah, I appreciate you all being with us. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.